Welcome to this episode from the Science Revision channel. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about the lungs. For your exam, you need to be able to explain how the lungs are adapted for gas exchange. First thing we've got to do is to actually be able to label the structures associated with the lungs. So we start off with the trachea. This is effectively the windpipe. So when you breathe in through your nose, the air rushes through the back of your nose and then goes down that tube we can see here called the trachea. And the trachea has got white bands of cartilage which keep the trachea open so that you can breathe all the time. When the air gets to the bottom of the trachea, it will then divide into the two lungs through the tubes called the bronchi. Singular, we call it the bronchus. If we actually look at the trachea and the bronchus and then the next tubes, uh, called the bronchioles, it almost looks like an upside down tree. Then we have this muscle at the bottom called the diaphragm. The diaphragm is really important as a muscle. When it moves down, that's when we breathe in and that draws air into the lungs. And when it moves up, that forces the air out of the lungs. At the end of each bronchus, the bronchus branches into tinier tubes called bronchioles. The bronchioles carry the air throughout the lungs and take them to their final place where gas exchange happens, which are these areas called the alveoli. The alveoli are the areas where oxygen enters the blood and carbon dioxide leaves the blood. So let's look at these structures in closer depth. So if we zoom in here, we can see that the alveoli are like bunches of grapes. Each little one, which is an alveolus, gives it a large surface area for oxygen to diffuse into the blood and for carbon dioxide to diffuse out. And what we can see are the capillaries all the way around the alveoli, which are constantly carrying blood to the alveoli to pick up the oxygen and then to take it away quickly to the rest of the body. If we then zoom in on an individual alveolus, so a little tiny air sac, one of the first things we notice is that there's a capillary almost wrapped right around it. And what that capillary does is bring deoxygenated blood, which has a lot of carbon dioxide in it, just past the alveoli. And what happens is, is the carbon dioxide diffuses out of the capillary into the alveolus. You then breathe out that carbon dioxide. As you take a breath in, oxygen enters the lungs, travels down the trachea, down the bronchus, down the bronchioles to the alveoli. And because there's a high concentration of oxygen in the alveoli, it will diffuse into the capillary and then get carried away to the rest of the body. And what you can actually see is the red blood cells, when they're deoxygenated, have a bit of a bluish tinge to them. As soon as they get that oxygen and become oxygenated, they take on that red color. So let's take a look inside the lungs. So we can see the trachea where the air first enters and then it splits into the bronchi and then we can see the bronchioles and then the tiny air sacs called the alveoli. As we zoom into the alveoli, one of the things we can notice is that the capillaries are very, very close to the thin alveoli walls and we can see the oxygen diffusing through easily and going into the red blood cells which are becoming oxygenated. One of the adaptations that we can also see is that the capillaries are very narrow and this slows down the passage of the red blood cells as they pass through. If they travel past slower, then they can pick up more oxygen. Here we can see how when you take a breath in, we get lots of oxygen entering the alveoli and it diffuses quickly into the blood because it's at a higher concentration than the blood. We can also see carbon dioxide at a higher concentration in the blood and therefore it diffuses into the alveoli so that we can get rid of it by breathing out. Another thing to note is just how large the surface area is of the alveoli and because there's several million of them inside the lungs it gives a total surface area of somewhere between 50 to 75 meters squared in an average adult. That's about a similar size surface area of a tennis court. So as I said at the beginning, the main thing you need to do for the exam is to know about the adaptations for gas exchange. So to summarize, let's go through the main points. So one of the first adaptations is that there are millions of alveoli, which creates a large surface area for diffusion of gases. And that's in the surface area between 50 to 75 meters squared. 
Each alveoli has thin walls making it easier for the gas to diffuse through, so that's really important. Each of the alveoli's has capillaries close to them which give it a continual blood flow and this keeps a high concentration gradient so that oxygen can diffuse into the blood and carbon dioxide can diffuse out. Also, each capillary has walls which are only one cell thick and this makes it very easy for the gases to diffuse through. You also need to know the difference between the composition of the air we inhale and the air we exhale. We can see this man here as he breathes out on a cold day. One of the things we exhale is quite a lot of water vapor. But how does the concentration of gases in the air differ between inhaled and exhaled air? Well, if we look at this table, we know that oxygen is being used for respiration. So when we breathe in the air from the atmosphere, 21% of the air is oxygen, only 16%. Uh, of the air that we breathe out is oxygen. And that's because oxygen is being used for respiration. With carbon dioxide, we can see that we only breathe in 0.04%. But because our cells are producing carbon dioxide through the process of respiration, we breathe out a much greater amount of carbon dioxide. So 5%, I know that doesn't seem much, but when you compare it to 0.04% that we breathe in, that's quite an increase in carbon dioxide that we produce. I hope you found that lesson on the lungs useful. Uh, why not check out the test yourself on the lungs video, uh, which is in the link over here. Uh, leave a comment if you want to ask any questions. If not, have a great day.